Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell. And uh, yes, after this episode, I think I'm going to go take a shower. Uh, my roommate should be home soon. I'm going to shave. I definitely need to shave. Uh, and I got my surgery tomorrow, so I don't know if I'll come back and record more episodes later tonight, but he does have mass later tonight as well in the afternoon, like around five-ish or so. So if I can squeeze in another video or two then, I will. So that way there's plenty of stuff that I can edit while I'm on bed rest. Uh, and then you'll see like throughout the next week or two. So hopefully, I don't know when this will air, uh, but I appreciate you guys supporting the show and, and you're being ghostwriting fans and I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get to this issue because issue three came out like over a month and a half ago and I'm just way behind on it so I do apologize um, but uh, you know and I'm caught up you know we have uh, Ghost Rider number three here they did a Marvel Tales Ghost Rider uh, issue which we'll talk about uh, at some point coming up uh, we have Incoming which had a couple pages of Ghost Rider in there and then issue four so I'm caught up on reading all these. I'm just not caught up on making these videos. So uh, we're going to go one at a time. I'll, I'll do Ghost Rider 3 here, and we'll do Incoming and Issue 4, uh, maybe in my next video if I have time to record one later tonight. And then the Marvel Tales one we'll get to probably, you know, in a week or two or something like that. I'll do the best I can. You know, I'll try to cover it, though, uh, fairly soon if I can. Uh, but definitely go pick up all these books no matter what. They're great. This is probably my favorite Marvel book on the stands right now. Uh, although I do really like the new Doctor Doom book as well. That's been doing really well for me as a Doctor Doom fan. But seeing this and having Danny catch back is just, just something I've wanted for so long. And it was something I never thought Marvel was going to do. So a uh, big thanks to C.B. Sabolsky, Ed Breeson, and everyone who worked on this. Anyone who had the idea to bring Danny catch back. I'm glad you did because there are some great moments, especially in this issue, that really just made, made me realize why I like the guy. He's flawed. I mean, that's one of the things I talk about on the Venom vlog and why I do that show is because I like Eddie Brock as a flawed human being. Some people, you know, prefer the version where he really, you know, did his due diligence and did his work and, and it was just like a mistake, a minor mistake he made innocently is why it led to him, you know, and his life being ruined. But I like the the idea of a guy who sabotaged it and cut corners. I think that's more interesting for a character uh, because having those flaws doesn't make him perfect. And I don't want a perfect character, especially someone like Venom. He doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, heck, even Peter Parker isn't perfect, you know? And that's one of the reasons why I like him. So uh, so Ghost Rider, Danny Ketch is one of those guys as well, where, you know, he's not a perfect character. He's gone through a lot of trials and tribulations, had a lot of failures, had a lot of deaths in his life, um, his own even at one point. And, you know, and he's been like a, a Ghost Rider in heaven and hell. It, he's had it. He's been through it all, man. And so this is a great guy to do interesting things with like you know okay let's let's have him run a bar now and he spent all of his money now that he's back from the dead and he's not an a, a you know ghostwriter for any either side anymore let's have him run a bar and then boom okay now he's a ghostwriter again <laughs> he gets reawakened and uh, at the at the you know as he's hitting the bo rock bottom uh, he has a one person who works for him a bartender that barely gets paid um, and he chases out most of the customers and then he drinks most of the alcohol that's there anyway so he, yeah, he's a broken character, but I think that makes him interesting and it gives him a place to be at. So that way, when he gets when he rises, you're rooting for it the whole time and you and you remember how bad it was for him. And that's what this issue has another moment like that in it. And I really, really dug it. Ed Breeson is doing a great job on this series. And Juan Frigeri is the artist of this issue. Uh, so not our, our usual artist, but Juan's art in this is fantastic. I really love the opening here where you have like this Native American ghostwriter fighting this um, this guy named Necrosis, I think. He's like a centaur, but he's got six arms. And he's from Limbo, as we reveal. So he's actually from Limbo, and he tells this ghostwriter as he kills it, tell Mephisto to stay out of Limbo. And I guess Limbo is run by somebody named Belasco, and that's the, the person who's in charge of Limbo and stuff. So uh, I really like that little setup. That's definitely world building there. I, I mentioned that a lot where writers try to do like... Um, the Grant Morrison or Jeff Johns thing where they want to like build these mythologies and uh, and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't for me this one is working I feel because they're bringing in these other territories these other realms uh, that works that's that's always been there with Ghost Rider but now they're just paying attention to it and giving more of a focus to it so it's it's building on stuff that's already existed uh, and then with with minor retcons like some of the retcons may be like who's in charge of what or whatever, or who, who you know, oversaw this world or this realm. There might be little minor things like that, but ultimately it's all uh, either existing characters or new characters that are in positions that we never knew about before, uh, like Belasco and Limbo and stuff. So yeah, this has been really great. Like as far as someone who's like a lore hound and who likes things to, you know, to be old things to be respected, even if you retcon it, but like try to be respectful in a way or build on it in some way or change minor things, 
I think Ed Breeson's doing a great job at that with this, uh, more so than other books that are out there, I feel, that are currently going. Uh, like, I think Ed really is focusing on what matters, not just to the character and the story, but also paying attention to those little lore details that, you know, that he dives into. And I appreciate it. And I love that Lilith is coming back and all these things. It's like, man, all these elements were there and now he's bringing them all back in new ways. And that's fantastic. And I love that. And he's also building off existing continuity like Mephisto being in Las Vegas, because uh, that's obviously on the cover here where Johnny Blaze is driving to Las Vegas. So all that is like he's he's making it work. He's He's like, oh, everything that happened before, it still happened. It's in continuity. And I'm going to pay respect to it. And then I'm going to put little nods to things that we might be retconning, but at least there's a nod to it. So you understand, hey, you know, I know this stuff happened and and, and we're, 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 you know, we're working it into the story. You know, we're not completely ignoring it. We're working it in somehow. And I, as a, like I said, a longtime fan, I appreciate that. So, uh, so when we last met, you know, Danny Ketch, he was thrown off the bridge. He was depowered, uh, Ghost Rider spirit taken out of him by Johnny Blaze. And he was thrown off the the bridge, and and he and ends up in the East River. And luckily, uh, we have um, a caretaker uh, who was in at the end of issue one, I think, and she found that cave where it said like there's this big war coming, and Danny Ketch is going to be the the center of it. So now she's in New York, and luckily she finds Danny. She saw him get thrown off. She finds him. She pulls him out, and she gives him CPR and saves his life. So meanwhile, that's going on. Uh, you know, and he's like, caretaker, what are you doing here? And she's like, look, there's a war coming and you're in the center of it. And he's just like, oh God, this old, you know, he's like, like really this old story, you know, but, uh, but what I like is that this is kind of new territory for, uh, for Danny as well. He has been the center of a lot of stuff in the nineties in his own book, but it was all personal stuff. It wasn't like, you know, affecting the Marvel universe stuff. And this sounds like it might be bigger. And where, whereas in Venom, I was kind of against taking Venom and building him to this big cosmic level on one level. I was against it, but then I was like, well, the concept is great. I just haven't liked a lot of the execution of building Venom that way. Like, I like the concept of, okay, let's put him in the center of the Marvel Universe. Let's make him this, you know, he's never really had that before. So it opens opportunity for new stories. And let's bring in this God element, you know, this symbiote God thing. It's like, I like all the elements and the, and the concepts of them, but I haven't really dug the execution. This is the inverse of that. Like this, I, I like all the concepts. And so far, I'm liking the execution, uh, very much so. So Johnny Blaze is, you know, he's he's looking for these portals. He went back to the portal that he came to Earth on. It's closed. And so now he's kind of trapped on Earth for the time being. So he's like, all right, I got to figure out how to get back there. And Lilith is probably going to try to take over hell. So I can't have that happen. So he's like, all right, I need to go talk to the one person who knows how to transverse between realms. I'm going to go find Mephisto. So he, you know, takes gets on his bike and heads off. Uh, and then meanwhile, Danny Ketch and, and uh, Caretaker, they continue their conversation at Danny's bar. He tells everybody to get out. He starts drinking all the alcohol. And uh, and then she's like, look, you know, you need to find whatever it is inside you to help me stop your brother. And he's like, I don't care, man. I'm not Ghost Rider anymore. That's what I wanted. I wanted the curse lifted. And it was at one point. And then my life fell apart. And when it came back, and now here I am at a bar, he's like, now I can at least maybe have a life or try to have a life now without the Ghost Rider. And she's like, she's like, whatever, man, just, you know, go find what you need to, you know, go talk to who you need to talk to, go find your balls, essentially, and, uh, and, and come back when you're ready to fight. So Danny does. And while he's going off to look for his ex, um, Stacy, uh, we have Lilith, you know, leading her army and getting ready to take over hell, opening portals. And she's ready to head to Earth now and, you know, and bring about, you know, some destruction on Earth. And they want to get Johnny Blaze and they want to dethrone him and all that stuff. And she, of course, she wants to rule. So meanwhile, Dan Ketch is talking to Stacy and he's like, hey, this is the moment, by the way, in the book that was my favorite moment because it showed it was a real conversation. I feel like I don't know if Ed Breeson has had a conversation similar to this with someone in his real life, but it felt like a genuine conversation as far as like an, a, an ex talking to, you know, their former partner. Danny really opens up to her and he says, you know, my life is the ghostwriter ruined it. He took it. He took you away from me or it took you away from me. It took away everything from me. My, my, my creativity, my, my, passion for stuff my my love for you your love for me like it ruined it all and and it left me with nothing and I'm I'm, I'm a husk of a person because of this and she kind of is like well you know she she just got done confessing like hey a cop got killed by by your brother Johnny Blaze uh, you need to go stop him and Dan's like I can't I got the ghostwriters taken out of me and here's why I'm, I'm a, you know and he went on that whole spiel and then she kind of looks at him and she goes you know Ghostwriter didn't take you take me away from you I didn't leave you because you were Ghost Rider. 
She's like, that's not why I left you. I left you because you hid things from me. You didn't tell me the pain you were going through. You didn't share your life with me. She goes, you are the reason why we're not together. And she goes, and now, and she goes, and I don't regret it because I have lovely kids and a, a loving husband and I moved on with my life. And she goes, but you couldn't. And because you couldn't moved on, you looked for things to blame and then you got drunk and then you, you know, so you looked for the, the ghostwriter to blame and that it, it found its way back to you. And then that gave you even more of a reason to blame and, and not, and not look at yourself. And what I really liked is that is so very human of all of us, you know, like some of us want to think we're the heroes of our stories, but we have so much baggage and we have, we have so much uh, of self-hate and blame that we don't express and we don't dive into and we don't look at. And, uh, and it reminded me of like a, you know, me a couple years ago when I was like, you know, I felt like I was blaming everyone else for my problems. And, uh, and because we all go through that phase. Right. And, and, but I felt like it was, un, I was, it felt unnecessary. I was like, why? This isn't that person's fault. It's my fault. Um, you know, this isn't that person's fault either. It's my fault. Uh, the way I'm acting in this situation isn't because they bother me. It's because I am bothering me. And once I started to examine myself like that, I felt like a, you know, I really grew. So when I saw Danny go through that in this issue and have her explain that to him, because sometimes you do, you need someone on the outside to explain, hey, here's why it's your fault and not their fault. And you start to realize, oh, crap. And then you start applying that. What other things have I been blaming other people on? And that felt like a very human moment. And so when I read that in this issue, I was like, wow. That's great. We don't we don't get a lot of moments like that in comic books these days, I feel. And uh, and this one was delivered so very well. And like I said, I don't know if Ed Breeson actually had a conversation like this with someone in his real life and just copied that conversation, but it felt very genuine. Minus, you know, they added in all the, the hell and heaven stuff and limbo stuff or whatever. They added in all the uh, supernatural elements, but still it felt like a really genuine conversation. And it, it meant a lot, like reading it. I was like, this is why I like Dan Ketch. Uh, Dan Ketch, you know, has a brother. I grew up with a brother. Um, it was always the two of them versus the world. And that's how I felt with me and my brother. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we're connected to our mom and, and, you know, th it's like the, it, it felt like I always connected with Danny catch on that kind of level, you know? And so seeing him go through the same growth moments that I've gone through in my life it just reassures it even more like, wow, this is why I like this character. And I'm glad Ed Breeson tapped into that, you know? And I think a lot of people, not just me, obviously, cause it's not about just me connecting with the character. I felt like that was a really human moment that all of us could probably connect to. I mean, there's has to be a time in your life where you felt that way, where you were like, I'm blaming others, and but it's my fault. It, it is my fault. If you haven't hit that moment yet, maybe you should start looking into it, you know, have someone help you out, you know, someone with an outside point of view, uh, because that moment is a big moment of growth for a person. So when it happens to Danny here, I 100% believe now when Caretaker showed up at the end of the book, and she goes, did you find what you're looking for? And he goes, yeah. And she goes, are you ready to go fight now? And he goes, hell yeah, <laughs> you know, and you believe it, because now Danny is has matured and just the span of like one issue has gone from death to you know drunk and belligerent to whining and being a big baby to now accepting who he is and and going into the fight and i was like wow that's a lot for one issue of a comic book for a character and i loved it i thought it was fantastic so then at the end you have some demons running around uh, on their way to vegas and of course they're causing a, a ruckus and it attracts the attention of Johnny Blaze. And they're like, well, aren't you going to question us? Cause Johnny Blaze like flips their car over and burns their legs and arms off. <laughs> and they're like, they're just like, you know, he like lifts up, picks the one up by the head. There's no arms and legs on it. And he goes, don't you want to question us? And Johnny Blaze is like, I know where you're going and I know why you're going to, uh, you're going to Las Vegas. And I think you're going to try to break out Mephisto and I'm going to beat you there. And so it shows Johnny Blaze at the end, looking over at the Las Vegas sign, you know, it's like 175 miles away so yeah this issue was awesome i loved it i thought ed breeson did a great job here and the art by juan was fantastic you know i love the artist that's normally on the book aaron cooter and i think he comes back in issue four but uh, having juan coming in and doing fill-in issues uh in between cooter stuff please keep that going because i really like his style too i love them both but uh but yeah i really like his style and i think he did a lot of great things in this issue great uh camera angles and dynamics um and great action scenes but also didn't make the dialogue scenes boring uh which is which is hard to do you know when you just have two people talking a lot of artists nowadays they just do the talking heads you know the the nine squares panel thing and and this one wasn't it was like people emoting you know like moving in you know screaming talking uh you know their eyes squinting you know in the conversation or it's like there 
was like real stuff there and I, I really appreciated that. So um, yeah, pick this issue up and I also want to give a special thanks to uh, Chris Robinson who's the editor of this book because he was nice enough to pick my letter out of all the times I've written you know, comic books and try to get a letter in the letters column, I finally got there and I want to give him a special thanks and my also my ghostwriter letter columns brother Balan, who also made it into the book as well. Uh, we both, uh, we did it, we rocked it. Uh, we, we wrote, uh, I think our letters in for the first issue right when it first came out. And it was so good to see them pop up in issue three here. I think our friends at the Ghostwriter podcast told me about it. They're like, hey, you made it. You're in the book. And so a big shout out to them, too. Definitely check out their show, the Ghostwriter podcast. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it means a lot. And it's great that this community, I'm, I'm kind of new to the Ghostwriter community because obviously I focus a lot on Venom and I do other stuff, Transformers stuff. But it's been really nice. The people who are Ghostwriter fans kind of, uh, you know, being so, you know, awesome to me has it, been nice because you're always scared when you're, dipping into a new fandom like Resident Evil. I've tried to like dip into Resident Evil fandom and, and become a Resident Evil channel numerous times. And maybe it's just because my follow through wasn't there or my my commitment or something, or maybe I just because I saw other people doing it better and I was just like, ah, until I come up with a different approach, I'm not going to do it. But I've only been really accepted by one other uh, Resident Evil YouTuber, uh, you know, Where's Barry, which is awesome because he's my favorite uh, Resident Evil YouTuber. Uh, but at the same time, but like, and like Transformers, I haven't really been pulled in by other Transformer people, but the Ghost Rider people have been very welcoming. So all fans out there, all, you know, Ghost Riders out there, uh, thank you for, for making me feel like a part, even a small part of this community. And, uh, and I definitely want to shout you guys out too. So if you have a Ghost Rider podcast, or if you have a Ghost Rider show or a website you do or anything, a Twitter account, you know, just comment down below, let us know so we can all, you know, start conversing with each other and interacting with each other. I'd love to see more of that here. And uh, and at some point when I get the ability to do Skype calls and record stuff and, and get a better computer setup, uh, I definitely want to do, you know, have guests in the future. Uh, people who do Ghost Rider stuff, Venom vlog, I want to have Venom people. Because uh, there's been a lot of times where I've tried to line up interviews and because the people either don't live in LA or they live too far away or they, you know, they're only, their schedule only allows me for a Skype call, I've been unable to do stuff like that. And it's, it's been a bummer. I can low rent do it like i could record a phone conversation if i wanted to uh but i feel like the quality wouldn't be that great so you know i'm, I'm trying and i know it's easy to do but i just need a couple pieces of equipment so i'll work on that uh, but at some point i would love to have people you know other fans and converse with other fans on this show and all these shows that I create. Um, but for this issue or for this episode, that's it for me. Ghost Hunter number three is on the shelves now. Go pick it up. It's really awesome. And we'll definitely get into issue four and incoming and then the Marble Tales one. I'll try to maybe record those later tonight if I can, but my roommate's going to be home very, very soon. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in the shower and I'm going to you know shave and get ready. I have a big day tomorrow, obviously, so I'll probably do some cleaning just to kind of clear my mind. And if I get a chance later on, I'll record more Ghost Rider episodes. But if not, I definitely will soon after my surgery once I'm kind of back on my feet. So uh, thank you guys. I, I did a lot of recording today though. Four episodes is enough, enough for me and uh, and I'm going to go get some much needed rest and a shower like I said and a shave uh, and then maybe some rest after I clean. So thank you guys very much for watching the show. As always let your comments be known down below and as always we'll continue our conversation down there. See you in the future. Peace.